Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Love Lab Tuts, and today I'm going to show you a little bit more about theming in Drupal. And what we're going to be doing is I'm going to set up this project even further so we can get our CSS, our JavaScript, everything ready, okay? So if you installed your theme, it should be in your site's all themes, and you should see it side by side with your Omega theme. And say I have my ST theme, which is the one I created before. It's all all done and good. And then we have this level up theme, which is the one I just created. And inside of our theme, you'll notice some folders. We have a C oops. We have a CSS folder, which has several different CSS files we'll go over. We have our info file. We have a logo uh, pre-process. We have process. We have a snap or screen, a screenshot, um, just a template.php file and a file for our templates. So while we're not going to really cover this templates, this template process, pre-process right now, we are going to be looking at this CSS folder. And what I'm actually going to do is going to create a new folder. I'm going to create a SAS folder. I'm going to create, oops, not inside of our SAS folder. Um, I'm going to create a JS folder. And um, that should be good for now. And so to create our CSS files, uh, you'll notice there's a global CSS, and then we have narrow, normal, default, wide, and default. These style sheets are set up to be with the media queries for those particular sizes. You'll notice that if you look inside of these uh, style sheets, for instance, if we look at this narrow one, there's no media queries anywhere in here wrapping your code. However, uh, Omega takes care of that. Basically, all you need to know is that the CSS in this narrow file uh, goes with your narrow view. And the global CSS file is where you define all of your global CSS. And since Omega follows a mobile first philosophy, this is going to be your mobile styles. Um, and, and actually it's going to be your total base styles and your mobile styles, right? Um, and then when you want to make changes for a little bit wider version of the site, you go to narrow, even a little bit wider, normal, default, and then default wide. And these files will just adjust the things that you need adjusting or moving around as you go. So the very first thing, since we're just starting with our mobile theme first, I'm going to actually create a copy of this uh, global CSS file and I'm going to drop it into my SAS folder. Okay, and I'm going to change the extension on this to be SCSS because we're going to be using this as our SAS file. Okay, so now we have this, we have our SAS folder, and we have our JavaScript folder. Cool. So uh, now it's about time I'm going to create a new window in Sublime Text. So for these examples, I'm going to be using Sublime Text 2. You can use whatever code editor you are uh, most you know, fluent in, uh, but I, you know, I recommend Sublime Text 2. If you haven't checked it out, please do. Um, and so I'm going to actually grab this whole theme. I'm going to drag it up into my project so we can have everything here. Okay, cool. Now inside of our JS folder, I'm going to create a new file and it's going to be, uh, oops, let me save this. It's going to be named script, scripts.coffee. Okay. Um, this is going to be our coffee script file. More on that later when we actually need to use it. And let's go to our SAS. I'm going to create a couple of new files in here. New file, I'm going to have uh, one that is underscore base.scss. And I'm going to have another one that's going to be uh, mixins. New file underscore mixins.scss. Okay. And in base, I'm going to import my mixins. Import. So I'm going to import my mixins into the base. And then I'm also going to import compass into base. Actually, I'm going to do that before the mixins. Okay, and so this is our base SCSS file, and then any sort of other documents we want to use, it's going to be bringing in both of these, okay? So in our global SCSS at the very top, we're going to do add import, and this is just going to be base. 
Okay, and you know, if you need to uh, learn about SAS, let's say you don't know about SAS, uh, check out the Level Up Tuts SAS tutorial series. It's completely comprehensive. It's going to tell you everything you need to know about SAS. As far as learning SAS goes, I think it's something that uh, can really help you understand CSS and really make writing it fun. So uh, go ahead and watch those tutorials if you haven't, or you can just be editing your CSS and watching along. So here we have our SAS set up. Next thing we need to do is have our compiler set up and we need to install Compass on this project. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm using an app called CodeKit, which I use frequently and I, I like a lot. Um, CodeKit sort of handles all of your compiling for CoffeeScript, it does minification of JavaScript and CSS, it does JS hinting, it's a great app. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my theme into CodeKit and let CodeKit handle its business. Um, here it is, it's got all our files. I'm gonna say, uh, project or compass, use compass for this project. Um, install compass. And so images. I'm gonna have the images be in an IMG folder, which I need to create. Uh, SAS is in the SAS folder. CSS is in a CSS folder. JavaScript is in a JS folder. Okay, and everything else I'm gonna leave. And I'm gonna just click add compass to project. And we're all good. While I'm here, I'm gonna create this IMG folder for my images. Cool. So, uh, if you'll notice, CodeKit has all of our our uh, scripts. It can uh, check them with JS hint, and it's going to compile them. In fact, if I click compile right now, um, we're going to. I don't know why I took away from that. If we check out our JS folder, we have not only a scripts.coffee but a script.js folder. Uh, pretty cool. And now, if we compile our styles, you're not going to see a whole lot. But if you look at this styles, you can see that global.scss is linked up to CSS and as well as all these print ones. Uh, we didn't create SCSS files for these others, but we will. So now we should be all set up to use our CSS. But let's say you needed to add a new CSS file. For some reason, you wanted another CSS file. Well, you can add that in the .info file. This is also where you'd be adding scripts. So let's add our script. Uh, since we have this, this .coffee or the scripts.js file, we want to add those to our info file. So let's go to our the base level of our theme. You'll go to leveluptheme.info. Let me decrease the font size a little bit on this because there's a lot of info here. And this is basically all the the guts info for your uh, sub theme. It has the name description, the uh, version, which you can change here, uh, the base theme, the screenshot name. So you can see all these regions and stuff like this, some settings. Uh, but if we come up here, let's scroll up, 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 up. So what we need to do is we need to add uh, some scripts. We just need to add our script file. And let's say if we need to add another CSS file, we do that here too. But uh, we can write scripts and then it's brackets equals js hyphen scripts dot js. And as many uh, script files as you need to add to your document, you can just do it here. You can add more. Um, but we just have this one for now. We might have a plugins.js file later once we get adding some jQuery plugins or something. But so now we should have our scripts in our theme. And a good way to test that is to come to your theme and you're going to want to clear the cache. So if you're making any modifications to your themes.info file, you're going to need to clear the cache before you see any change. Okay, so let's clear the cache. So since we added that scripts file to our .info file, we've cleared the cache. If we check our source, uh, let's search for scripts. You can see here it is right here. Uh, it's added to our site for us, uh, sites, themes, level up, JS, scripts, .js, which is cool. This is how we want it. Because technically you could get in into the uh, template files of your theme and you could just add this line of code yourself. But what that doesn't do is it doesn't make this JS, uh, Drupal doesn't know it's there necessarily if you do it that way. And why that's bad is, see in here, if uh, in your performance, you can aggregate all your JavaScript files through Drupal, and it's something you're going to want to do to make your site run a little bit faster. So add your JS files and your CSS files through the .info in your 
in your sub theme and they'll show up and Drupal will know they're there. Okay, so we're all set to go. Now if we make any changes on our CSS, in fact, let's do that real quick just so we have something to show for it. Um, so in our global.css, we're going to say body and then background, no, not backtrace, background. And we're gonna call the background, uh, we're just gonna have it be 333, it's just a dark gray. And okay, we can see compass has compiled. We're gonna refresh and now we have our dark gray background. So we're on the start to theming. Right now we have a theme, we have our own JavaScript files in here, and we're ready to go a little bit further. As always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment on the video or hit us up on Twitter at LevelUpTuts. As always, this is Scott, and thanks for watching.